All right, we're going to uh, try this. Again, we're going to fill out one of our quadratic maps. Um, just to kind of demo, it's a little easier to follow when it's happening than to just look at it when it's done. So we're going to start here with the standard form. I'll probably talk fairly fast as I go through this, try to get this video into 15 minutes. So starting from standard form, I've picked a quadratic equation here. I know some of the characteristics of this, so it's going to work out for us. Um, if we want, if we have standard form, we want to find x-intercepts. It indicates that the quadratic formula is the way to do that. Quadratic formula, of course, works when we have something that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So we'll get that set in here. And our quadratic formula then is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a which will be a 4 in that case. We simplify here a little bit. We got a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus uh, 12 times 8 which is 96 all over 4 which is a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 121 all over 4 so I've got a negative 5 plus 11 over 4 which is uh, 6 fourths or 3 halves or we have an x equals negative 5 minus 11 over 4 which is a negative 16 fourths or a negative 4 so I have those two x-intercepts I can mark those on my axis down here if I was plotting points on the graph at one and a half and at negative four. The axis of symmetry, we can always find that on a quadratic because it will be at x equals negative b over 2a which we have already done here once so negative five over four is the axis of symmetry negative five fourths, negative one and a quarter is going to be right around here, exactly halfway between my uh, x-intercepts. The coordinates of the vertex, well I know the x-coordinate is negative 5 fourths and my standard form gives me an input-output relationship so I need to do f of negative 5 fourths which is 2 times negative 5 fourths squared plus 5 times negative 5 fourths minus 12 which is, uh, let's see, 25 sixteenths times 2 is 25 eighths uh, minus 25 fourths, which we're going to write as 50 eighths um, minus 12, which we'll write as minus 96 eighths. And so 50 minus 25 uh, or 25 minus 50 is negative 25 minus another 96 is negative 121 eighths so my vertex is at negative 5 fourths comma negative 121 eighths um, that is a little over 15 so I'm going to have to scale here make this a negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8 10, 12, 14, this is negative 16, and I want to be just a little past negative 15, so it's going to be right around that area. Okay. My y-intercept is what happens if I evaluate f at 0, which is just going to be 2 times 0 squared plus 5 times 0 minus 12 which is negative 12, uh, 6, 8, 10, 12, so that's going to hit right there and by symmetry I'm also going to have a point right there so I can see that my parabola is going to look something like that. Okay. Give me a pretty good idea graphically of what's going on there. If I continue down this side, 
of the form, we're going to look at uh, the factored form. In order to get to the factored form on the side here, this arrow pointing down says that I need to factor. I factor by loading in the 2x squared and the minus 12. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And the linear part, the 5x, those two have to add up to 5. So I need two numbers to multiply to 20, negative 24 and add to 5. An 8 and a negative 3 will do that. So I'll load an 8x and a negative 3x in here. Greatest common factor this way is a 2x, which means that has to be an x. This has to be a negative 3. This has to be a plus 4, and that checks out to give me that. So my factored form down here is f of x equals x plus 4 times 2x minus 3. Um, if I had the factored form to begin with and I wanted to find the x-intercepts, I would do that by the zero product property. So I'd say zero is equal to x plus 4 times 2x minus 3, which means that either x plus 4 is equal to zero or 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. So x is negative 4 or 2x equals 3 and x is 3 halves, exactly what I had before. Y-intercept is always about finding um, or about plugging 0 in. So if I plug 0 into my factored form, f of 0, I get 0 plus 4 times plus 2 times 0 minus 3, which of course is 4 times negative 3. That's negative 12. Um, and my axis of symmetry, um, I'm actually going to bring the axis of symmetry over from uh, this other side. So I'm going to go across here. This bottom right-hand corner is less about a different representation of our quadratic and, uh, and more some other information that could get us to the quadratic. So again, using our zero product property from that form as we did already, we have the zero equals x plus 4 and 2x minus 3, which gave us the x-intercepts of negative 4 and 3 halves. If we know the x-intercepts, we can find the um, axis of symmetry by averaging the intercepts. That's the way symmetry would work here. So that's a negative 4 plus 3 halves, all divided by 2. Negative 4 is 8 halves plus 3. Um, so negative 8 halves plus 3 is negative 5 halves, divided by 2 is negative 5 fourths, so our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5 fourths. Okay. I'm going to come back and I'll fill this bottom one in a little bit later. Uh, let's work our way back up. If we had the factored form in one of the standard form, we can use our area model with an x plus 4 and a 2x minus 3. That gives an area here of 2x squared, an 8x, a minus 3x, a minus 12. And if I add all those pieces together, I've got a 2x squared uh, plus 5x minus 12, which of course is exactly what it was that we started with. And let's work across to the vertex form. In our vertex form, we want to make this a square, not just a rectangle. So this is going to start with an x squared here, but our formula started with a 2x squared. So we have to pull the 2 out of there, at least out of the first two terms. And our square will represent just x squared plus 5 halves x. Of course, if it's going to be a square, then that 5 halves has to be split equally between these parts, so half of the 5 halves, or 5 fourths x, has to go there, and the other 5 fourths x will go here. That, of course, makes this an x, and that x forces this to be a 5 fourths, and this to be a 5 fourths, which forces this bottom to be a 25 sixteenths, which, of course, was never part of the problem, so I have to subtract it back out, so I'm really only adding zero. So here is everything that was inside my parentheses. I had a 2 on the outside and a minus 12 on the outside this way. 
I'll now rewrite this as the area of the square. So I have the 2 and the parentheses still with a minus 12. The square is an x plus 5 4 squared minus 25 sixteenths from the outside piece. And if I take that up here, I'll do some of my simplifying up there. Distribute the 2 through. So that's 2 times x plus 5 4 squared uh, minus 25 eighths minus 12, which we will convert to 96 eighths. And I get f of x is equal to 2 times x plus 5 4 squared minus 121 eighths. The advantage of the vertex form is the x shows up only once, so I can represent that with an arrow diagram. If I start with an x, my first step is to add 5 fourths, and then I will square, multiply by 2, and subtract 121 eighths. Um, describing the transformations, well, my transformations begin at the parent function. I have one transformation arrow on the left hand side of the parent function, which would be a minus 5 fourths, so that is a shift left uh, 5 fourths. And then I have a multiplication by 2, so that's a vertical stretch by 2. And then subtracting 121 eighths, so that's a shift down. 121 over 8. The x-intercepts I would find on this by putting a 0 into the output. So if I put a 0 on the output there, I need arrows coming back, which would be a plus 121 over 8. That's what that says in there in tiny letters. And divide by 2, and a plus or minus square root. So 0 plus 121 over 8 is 121 over 8. Divide by 2, and I get 121 over 16. Um, I then do the plus or minus square root of that, which will be a root 121, or actually I'll go ahead and do this. Square root of 121 is 11. Square root of 16 is 4. Uh, so I have that minus 5 fourths which gives me an 11 over 4 minus 5 over 4. If I do that one, then I get 6 fourths or 3 halves. Or I get the negative 11 over 4 minus 5 over 4 is negative 16 over 4, which is negative 4. So find my x-intercepts that way. I'm going to locate Kate the vertex before the axis of symmetry. Um, because it will give it to me along the way. So to do that, I go to my arrow diagram. At the parent function, the vertex is at 0, 0. Um, so following this arrow, that direction, my new x location for the vertex is negative 5 fourths. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 121 eighths is negative 121 eighths. So my vertex after the transformations is at negative 5 fourths comma negative 121 over 8. And the axis of symmetry then is at x equals negative 5 fourths because it will always pass through the x-coordinate of the vertex. All right. Um, if, let's go back up and fill in this part. If I was vertex form and wanted to get back to the standard form, I'm going to take uh, this, which says, I need an x plus 5 fourths that I'm going to square. So times itself, I have a 2. I have two copies of that with a minus 120.